Hi guys, it's Leif for Access Real. We're at Supernova in Perth and we're talking to author Raymond Tice. Raymond, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. How did Sydney go last week? It was cold, wet, but the people were great. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, Magician's End is out, of course. Um, the obvious question is, how does it feel for you closing the book on, on Midkemia for, for after such a long time writing in that setting? It's, uh, it's, it's oddly unaffecting because one, uh, Mekemia to me is always there. You know, not only are all the books that I wrote still the books that I wrote, but it's an objective uh, virtual world. So I could go back anytime I want and write more stories should I choose. Sure. Uh, I never say never, but I am looking forward to doing some different new projects. Uh, the next one is called The King of Ashes and it's the first book in The War of Five Crowns. Right. And then after that I'm doing another contemporary dark fantasy. Uh, not much like fairy tale, but in the sense that it's set in the modern world. Right. And how far ahead are you with uh, The King of Ashes? Even as we speak, I'm back at home working hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, publisher wishes I was. Right. No, I'm, it, we're making progress. It's, yep. it's a bit of a slower start than I would expect because um, it's a new world. So I've got to do a little world building at the same time I'm crafting the narrative. Sure. Uh, with all, you know, if, if fate is kind, it will be out next year at this okay. time. Okay. Okay. That's great. Now, um, when you first were working on Magician, how far ahead were you thinking in terms of that world and, and what might happen in Not the Not at all. Nothing. Zero. I mean, I didn't know anybody would buy Magician, let alone a, a, a sequel or multiple sequels. Yeah. It wasn't really till I got into the Serpent War saga, it occurred to me, you know, that I, I might end up writing all five Rift Wars. Mm. Uh, because it was a gaming environment at university, we had all this silly backstory, you know, the kind of stuff that you do when you're, you know, playing a lot of paper tabletop paper and pencil game and drinking a lot of cheap beer <laughs> and uh, as college students do yeah uh, the cheaper the better and about serpent work and I went yeah might be doing all five so I better start thinking a little more globally mm. so while I had hooks and little bits of business in the rift war that are reflected in magicians in it really was starting with the serpent war saga that I started getting heavy into the mythology and the mm. uh, and, and the, the cosmic things that really became very important later in the series. Sure. Now you mentioned a bit of gaming back in college. What sort of um, tabletop games? Well, we, we started like everybody did with Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. And if you're old enough to remember the original three pamphlet in the little white box, the set of incomprehensible rules. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like everybody else, we were just going, okay, this doesn't work. Let's try our own. Yeah. So by within two years, uh, every original D and D rule had been thrown out the window. And we had replaced it with our combat system, our magic system, our uh, encounter system. Right. Uh, you know, in fact, we published um, several uh, volumes as Midkemia Press back mm. in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. And um, but it was invaluable for me because it gave me this fully fleshed world to write in without having to do some world building. So that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now with the the Midkemia stories, you, you, it is a sort of a trilogy with Magician Silverthorn and, and Zephanon. And then we had the, the standalone books with Prince of the Blood and King's Buccaneer before you delved into Serpent War Saga. Right. Um, Which my publisher cleverly put together and called Crondor Sons when they resolicited. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, so how did it come about? You did you did a fairly large story arc and a couple of independent standalone stories and then you went went back into a multi book arc. Was was that your idea early on, or did that sort of, is that just that, how it evolved? The, you can't really plan ahead. There, there are two variables, one of which is what you would like to write, and the other one is what the market will permit you. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful when they overlap, <laughs> but as far as multiple book deals go, uh, you're talking to your editor and you say, well, I think this is going to be three books, and halfway through the second one you go, no, it's four. Right. Or, okay, no, it's only two. Uh, originally, Conclave was going to be uh, uh, three books, but but at the end of two, I pretty much had everything I wanted to do about Talon, and I said, okay, I owe them another book. Oh, I know, I'll make Casper the good guy, <laughs> and that was a great deal of fun. Yeah, yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. And that's the unexpected benefit of being a little flexible in your planning, mm. is that you have an opportunity to uh, you know kind of make things up as you go and, and get creative. Yeah. Now, with uh, the, the Empire Trilogy, you, you work in collaboration on, on those stories. How did that come about, working with, with Jenny? And I met Jenny in Chicago in 1984. Uh, mm -hmm. Her husband, now her husband at the time, her ex-boyfriend, they, they did get back together, obviously. Okay. Um, uh, Don Mates introduced us, and uh, 
I really was taken by Janie uh, because she was very bright and a woman of strong opinion. And we corresponded a little bit. And I had always wanted to do the other side of the Rift War. And I wanted a female protagonist. Uh, never having been a teenage girl myself, I, I really felt I needed a, a woman collaborator. So it took me about a year to convince Janie to write with me. Because okay. she had a pretty busy schedule. And originally it was going to be one big book. And it, such things happened. It took on a life of its own. And, you know, so you know, it ended up being three. Yeah. Uh, hardest work I've ever done. Some of the best work I've ever done. Janie is a fierce, uh, determined collaborator who, when she has an idea, she sticks to it. But the beautiful thing about Janie is that she would fight and fight, and yet when the light bulb went on and we came to a compromise, it was always better than what she wanted and better than what I wanted. The mm -hmm. third choice was always superior. And I, I always thanked her for that because it, it would have been too easy for her to roll over and just, oh, it's, it's his universe, so we'll do it his way. Mm -hmm. But she never let me get away with that. And I think, okay. it's, I think there's some things in that book I'm so proud of that I never could have done by myself. So was the creative process along the lines of you both putting ideas out there and really hashing out where it could go and what yeah. the details could be? It began with the silly notion that I was going to write first draft and she was going to rewrite it and correct all the not a girl things. That lasted about two weeks. <laughs> And then she said, wait a minute, I want to do the wedding. And I went, okay, I'll do the wedding, and then you do the wedding. And, th and from that point forward, it was like leapfrogging. Okay, here's this bit, you rewrite that. and Okay, hey, if you're doing that, then we have to go back and rethink this. And much more organic than I had planned. I really, really wanted her just to rewrite my stuff. And instead, it was a true collaboration, and she brought a, a prodigious amount of talent to it. Mm. Yeah. Now, you briefly mentioned some of the things you're working on that are coming up. And a few years ago, you did Fairy Tale completely outside the Nukemia universe, which was a great read. Um, are we likely to see more things along the, the, the lines of the Fae and things like that? Or is it. Well, is there actually, you can share? a little bit. Um, yeah. uh, I'm doing a, a, a new trilogy, uh, The War of Five Crowns, um, which, before anybody who's looking at this asks, yes, it's just like Game of Thrones <laughs> with show tunes. Uh, you know. No, it's, 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 you know, I don't know why. I just, I picked that title and suddenly all I get is, oh, it's like Game of Thrones. Right, right. And only if I make as much money as George. Um, no, it's a good writer. He's a very good writer. Yeah. Um, and um, I'm doing a book called uh, Elder Gods. And in the sense, it's a little bit like the Fae, only I'm going way back. I'm going to neo, you know, uh, proto-Indo-European kinds of, of gods. Which is great because I get to make them up. Yep. Uh, but it's it's the elder gods come back suddenly out of nowhere. They return. Okay. And they're not happy with what they see. Mm -hmm. And when the dust settles, a hundred years later, you know what was six billion people is now three hundred million. Yeah. And most most of most of the big cities are smoking craters, <laughs> and and ninety percent of humanity is enslaved, and it's about the ten percent of humanity who isn't enslaved, and and and. How, okay, we got rid of them once before, obviously, 10,000 years ago. Yeah. Uh, we got to figure out how that happened and figure out how to do it again. And that's, and that's what that book's about. And um, are you just thinking one book at the moment for that? or? No, that is a, that is a standalone. A, that will right. be a standalone. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, it, I mean, the plan is it will be yeah. a standalone. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> well, so we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Now, you, you mentioned uh, George Martin as a writer. You think he's, he's, he's a good writer? Oh, he's a great um, writer. I mean, I, I met George. Um, 85 I think it was mm -hmm. and I already read uh, Armageddon Rag which was great and I had gone back and read Fever Dream mm -hmm. um, I just don't read other people's heroic high fantasy because right. you know, I'm pretty sick of writing that stuff by the end of the day so. yeah, yeah. But uh, and then George had a turn on uh, both Murder She Wrote and he was the uh, head writer uh, and story editor for uh, Beauty and the Beast on CBS and uh, then he got back into novels. And uh, no, he's a good writer. He's a very good writer. What were some of the writers that, that inspired you in your in your youth when you were setting out? Oh, pretty much any good writer I read. I yeah. mean, there were so many. Uh, as far as the more genre stuff, it was the uh, the pulp guys. You know, Ryder Haggard and A. Merritt, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, mm -hmm. um, Conan Doyle's Professor Challenger stories, uh, plus uh, what they call Boys Adventure. You know, which doesn't exist anymore. Anthony Hope, yeah. Raphael Sabatini, um, all the historical writers: Thomas Gustain, Mary Renault, Samuel Schoenberger, 
uh, Rosemary Sutcliffe. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and the classics, Twain, mm. you know, Dickens. Mm. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Shakespeare. I mean, yeah. if it's good writing, it sticks. Yeah, yeah, it stays with you. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, thanks for talking to us here at Supernova. Um, all the very best with Magician's End and the new books that you're working on. Well, thank you very much. Thanks very much.